Okay, on today's episode of the Dreams to Plans podcast, we are so freaking excited to have on a very special guest, our first guest ever on the Dreams to Plans podcast, the queen of winging it, Emma Isaacs. Emma was a business owner by the age of 18, property investor by 19, and self-made millionaire by 23. She is the founder and global CEO of Business Chicks, a thriving global community on two continents in 11 cities, producing more than 100 events a year. Emma is also the author of best-selling book, Winging It, where she builds a beautiful case for going after your dreams without having a perfect roadmap to get there. Emma is also a mom to six kids. Lord freaking help me. Uh, She doesn't believe in work-life balance, but prefers to advocate for a full life where people are in constant evaluation of what they truly want from it. She's a fearless leader with never ending courage and has an infectious energy that is aspiring to thousands. Ladies and maybe a few gentlemen, Emma (laughs) Isaacs. Hi you two, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we are so so grateful that you are here. Yeah, it's amazing. So Emma, you are literally my spirit animal. Like I, (laughs) instead of saying wing it, I always say, let me flow. Like I don't write anything down. I literally show up. I figure it out. Like jump in the net will appear. That is how I roll. So I think you are literally like my Australian spirit animal. I hope so. Yeah, Yeah, I love, love, love the fact that you just go. You go and you think later and you'll figure it out and take it on as they come. And I think I noticed you said that you didn't really ever like work for somebody. You always worked for yourself. And I think that's our something that we have an advantage on because we just are used to, you know, doing our own thing. I did the same thing. I never worked for anybody. So I feel like people in the corporate world are so used to having a playbook that we mm-hmm. just don't. And I feel like it works to our advantage. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, 100%. There's something beautiful about having a beginner's mind and having the naivety to not have the answers, right? And that's certainly what happened in my businesses that I've started and scaled. Um, As Kat said in the intro, you know, I started my first company when I was 18 years old. And the way that happened was um, I went to university and I only lasted for like six months. For me, it was just not fast enough. I wanted to get out into the big, bad world. I wanted to learn. I wanted to meet people. I wanted to make money. I was just really hungry to kind of, you know, I don't know, jump in and and get some more life experience. So I left uni, uh, met someone out uh, just socially at a party one weekend. And she's like, I've started this little uh, staffing agency. Why don't you come and have a chat with me? So And I went, ended up getting that job, was there for literally a few weeks before her and her business partner parted ways. And as he walked out of the room, um, he turned around and said to her, if you're going to offer equity to anyone in this little company, you'd offer it to that kid sitting over there. So that's a very, very, very abridged story of how I came to be um, a 50% shareholder in a tiny company at the age of 18. And like you said, like I had no playbook. I had no experience. I had nothing to guide me. I had no legacy of working for someone else or in a corporate for even five or six years. There was no experience. So I just did what felt right. You know, I did little things around the office that I could see, Hey, that doesn't look the way it should look. I, I made sure we were all answering the phone in the same way. I made sure that, you know, I don't know, I just, I just did the things that practically made sense to me. Um, And, you know, we were in that business for seven years and we built it into a really great little small company. We had about 40 people on the team. Uh, We won a host of different awards and it was a really, really beautiful foundation and start for me in small business. Because when you, you know, like like you two know, when you start and you have to do every single role in your company and you're working 18, 19 hours a day, you, you see it all. So you see the problems, you see the challenges and you also see the solutions. Um, But after about seven years in that company, I started to think about what might be next for me and um, the way, and I know we're going to talk about it in this podcast, hopefully, you know, the way I'd been able to build my network in those seven years of my first business was through networking. Like I would go to every single event, every single seminar, every single, I'd read every single book. I just put myself out there so that I could be learning as much as possible and meeting as many people as possible. So a friend invited me along to an event run by a company called Business Chicks, and I thought that was a worst company name I'd ever heard in my life. 
<laughs> so I said, yeah, I just said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go to that thing. That sounds terrible. And it's, it's insulting to women and I'm a feminist and I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm not going to anything that calls themselves chicks. That's just embarrassing. And she said, you need to get over yourself and come along and experience these things. It's actually really, really, really special. So I walked into that room. I completely fell head over heels in love with this concept of, um, it wasn't necessarily huge. There's about 200 women there, but they're really happy to be there. They were like, you know, leaning forward and high-fiving and hugging. And, you know, just the, there was a lot of positivity in that room, right? And it was like no other networking experience I'd had. Um, and I ran back to my office at the staffing agency. I passed around my credit card. I said, every single person here become a member. Let's buy um, a bunch of tables at the next event. So we did all that, got to the next event. I heard the, the company was for sale. Um, so I was 25 years old when I ran up to the lady at the end and said, I want to help you with this. I want to buy this company. And that's what I ended up doing. So we started out, we had 200 members when we when I first bought it. Um, we now reach over 500,000 women across the globe as as Kat said. Um, Pre-COVID, we were doing 110 live events with past speakers like Ariana Huffington, Sir Richard Branson, Liz Gilbert, Brene Brown, um, Sarah Jessica Parker, like you, you named them, we probably had them on our stage. Um, and yeah, that's been, that was 15 years ago, you guys. So I, yeah, I honestly feel as excited about the business as I did, you know, 15 years ago. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a real, um, a real ride so far. So what was that? I we Kat and me both have the similar experience of going to a event, conference, however you want to say it. I went last year. I'm only about a year and a half in my business because of that conference. I went and I didn't have a business. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have anything. I just knew I needed to go to this conference. And there was this feeling in my gut that was like, you have to go. And I had no rhyme or reason, literally no reason to go. So I want you to deep dive on that feeling of like how you were there and you were like, I have to be a part of this. I have to buy this. Like, was it that same similar feeling where you just can't explain it? It's just something in your gut was like, this is the right move. I think you've summed it up absolutely beautifully. And I think what I see a lot of women doing is instead of listening to that feeling that you get in the pit of your stomach or that little voice that's, you know, at the back of your mind, what we do is we overanalyze everything and we overthink things and we think, oh, I, I cannot afford it, or I don't have the time, or I have no reason to go, or I don't know anyone else who's going there. So I'll be alone. You know, we, we overanalyze and we overthink. And when we're in our heads so much, we miss out on so many opportunities that are out there. So I would always advocate for, yes, do that thing that feels right, that makes you sit up a little bit more that makes you put your shoulders back and talk a little bit faster and you know you feel everything activated and that's that's the feeling you got when you decided to go to that conference and you got that buzz and that was exactly the same feeling for me when I chose to um you know step forward and talk to the lady about buying that business because it just felt like something special was happening and it's it's something that's really informed my business decisions um you know ever since you know from running the company at the age of 18 it's this whole idea of you should do the things that light you up you should do the things that scare you because it's not always a lovely feeling it, it, it you know the gut feel can be a, oh I'm, I'm petrified I'm terrified of doing this thing, time right it's, <laughs> so it's not like a nice it's not like a nice feeling of oh okay you know that feels it's like heck this scares the crap out of me so I need to go and explore it so you know that has definitely been a huge part of the way I've tried to um, yeah, just just let those feelings guide my next move in every single way of building a business. And I think that's what entrepreneurs do really, really well. They get out of their heads and they drop into their stomachs or they drop into their hearts or whatever it is and they go forward. And I, I think a huge part of that is doing what feels right and what your gut tells you. Yeah, I think that's such a, a beautiful message, not to sound cheesy, but I always tell people that I work with or even like friends, I'm like, if your dream does not scare the shit out of you <laughs> yes. a little bit, like it is not yes. big enough. You need to dream bigger. And yeah. if it does scare the crap out of you, like you're on the right track. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. hundred yes. percent. Yeah. So many times I just feel so people are doing a disservice to their, their dreams and their life because they're like, Oh, this scares me. And you talk yourself out of it before you even let yourself begin. And mm -hmm. you know, I, Renee is the queen of winging it in the sense that she doesn't come prepared with like notes or like a game plan where I am the exact opposite, but <laughs> I am just the queen of like starting before you're ready. And right. even though you feel fear and it's nice to know that you like, you are a successful businesswoman with a, you know, amazing track record and that you can admit that 
yes, like I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to figure it out. And I still get scared too, because a lot of times people don't admit that these things scare the crap out of them. hundred percent, hundred percent, Kat, you're so right. And I think also the, the flip side of that is important. Um, you know, really bringing your self-awareness to, if you are just cruising, if you are just kind of going through the motions in your business or your life, and you're kind of just waking up every day and it's kind of easy and, you know, I mean, great. We all want ease. We want to feel a sense of grace in what we do. We, we want life to be, you know, comfortable and, and, you know, we want to be content, all of those things. But I know for me, if I'm not looking forward to something that scares me, if I'm not, if I don't have those kind of butterflies and I know I'm playing it safe and I'm not doing enough. So I'm always trying to be aware of that and trying to put something in my future that scares me a little bit or trying to, you know, shake things up if I feel like I am cruising, you know, and it's, it's little things, you know, even, um, at the start of this year, well, actually, for, for, since forever, like you guys said in the in the bio at the start, I bought my first property when I was nineteen. I bought, um, I had a goal to, to buy ten investment properties um, as soon as I could, and I did that in about my um, mid to late twenties. And I've been investing ever since, right? Investing in companies, investing in other entrepreneurs, investing in property. But I've always had run this story, right? This self limiting belief that I know nothing about the stock market, like I know nothing about shares. You know, weird. This is even weird self talk that you'll probably think, why? Why is she doing? But like, you know, I've, I've thought, you know, the stock market is for Wall Street and those dudes that do that and I know nothing about it, right? So I was running this, playing this stupid soundtrack for years that I couldn't invest in the stock market. And finally, I just went, that's just ridiculous. Like you need to just start, you need to take your own advice and dip your toe in and start. So, you know, I downloaded an app and I started buying a couple of shares and this past like eight or nine months uh, during the pandemic, I've been trading like an absolute demon and I've done so, so well from it. But isn't it, I just tell that story because it's like, that was my belief that it wasn't for me. I didn't know how to do it. I had I had no clue. You know, it was for other people, and I just gave myself a slap around the face, and I and I went for it. Right, and again, you start really really small. You start playing with it, and then you like you you build that muscle. And I'm I'm just really proud of myself that I I did that. But it's just crazy because this is the advice I give to everyone else. So I did start to listen to myself. <laughs> so much easier to like dish advice, and sometimes you <laughs> yeah. it yourself you're like, ooh, that was a little scary. Yeah. You have to constantly put yourself in uncomfortable situations. That's the one lesson I think I've learned in the past year of being like in business is if you aren't like looking forward to something like Kat says that scares the shit out of you, you're probably yeah. not doing enough and yeah. you're wondering why you're not growing. That's probably why. Like if you look back and you're like, how many times have you really been nervous this past like couple of months? And if you mm -hmm. can't really remember any, you're probably not doing it right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I love you that. You probably step it up. <laughs> and I've been in business for probably about – eight or nine years. And in the beginning, if I'm honest with myself, I was kind of coasting and not really feeling comfortable enough to put myself out there. But in the past two years, I have just been like, I don't, I can't, like, I know I'm made for more. I know I'm made for something greater than this. And I'm just going to not care what anyone else thinks anymore. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. And these have been like the best years of my business and life, even in the middle of a pandemic and just being able to do this podcast with phenomenal women like you. I mean, it gets a little nerve wracking, but these are the things that like make you who you are as a business owner when you put yourself out there. Yeah. And you I forgot to say me, you forgot to say me. You I forgot to say me. <laughs> Don't give it to everyone. Thank Hello. you. <laughs> no, but I, I think, I think that is just gold. What you just said, then, Kat, because I know. I mean, I always get asked the question, "What would you do differently?" You know, if you could wind back the clock to twenty years ago when you started your first business, whatever. And I think what you say there is just so valid in that you can start and have this kind of trepidation and go really slow and be fearful, and you're like, "I'll figure it out softly, softly." Right? You got to go for it because I can tell you, like looking back now, twenty years ago, I wish I had spent every single moment going for it, the same velocity that I go for things now, right? Like the, I let the fear take over a little bit and thought, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll just, no just, like you just got to go for it and not waste those years, right? This is all we've got. And I tell you, I mean, I don't know how old you two are, but I'm 41 now and, and I've still got so much like in me and my future is amazing. But, you know, again, 20, 20 years of building companies, I wish I had gone as fast as I do now back then. Um, so I think that's just really golden advice for anyone who might be starting out and thinking, oh, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm just going to dip my toe in. It's like, no, go, go, go. <laughs> Ask what you need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so since we're on the topic of like fear and putting yourself out there and going full throttle, let's talk about um, real quickly being moms and then going full throttle, because I can admit for myself that for 
a little while, I used my kids as an excuse for not being able to really give things my all. And, you know, I'm pregnant with another baby on the way. I have two little girls. And now I feel like more than ever, like I want to do more, like more, more, more. And Emma, you have six kids, you know, Renee, you have a son and literally I know it's not that black and white. And I know there is no secret sauce, but what is your secret? and having six kids (laughs) and looking gorgeous like looking so gorgeous right now bless you um there is no secret right like no one has this key to unlock this uh, treasure chest of secrets like we're all in it. it is freaking hard it is really really hard to manage a family and to run a business and you know, I mean, if I do anything well, it's just that I try and not let those voices take over, right? And it's not to say I'm perfect at all. I'm constantly in um, opposition with what, you know, the thoughts to go over to my head. So listen, I mean, I had my companies from a very early age, as you know, so I, I, I feel like I learned a bunch of skills about time management and stress management and, you know, all, all those things that really helped me in my parenting, right? So I'm like, I'm like a ninja with my parenting. <laughs> like you, you should see me going, you have to be like, when you have six kids, you have to be ultra organized and have systems everywhere. Um, we have really great people around us. So, um, you know, I have two babysitters in the, in the home who, um, you know, we work as a team, like me and my husband and even the older kids, like my kids range from 11 down to five months so I've got an 11 year old nine seven five three and the little guy and you know even the 11 and nine year old like they're always changing a diaper or like you know doing something and and that's the way it's got to be so we very much run like a team um I am very very organized in our home so I try and make sure that um yeah there are systems there and it helps but that's not to say the wheels don't fall off all the time um and this year has been really really hard you know I mean I've always been someone who has gone to an office and and you know been very very um present when I'm working and trying not to think about the kiddos when I'm working and and same goes for at home like when I'm at home I'm trying to be with the kiddos and not thinking about work and of course that all sounds wonderful and it's it's you know we all couldn't say that that happens but it's very idealistic um, but this year has been hard. Like I, you know, I lock myself in my home office and there's, there's a sign on the door that says mom's on a call, don't come in, but they still, they still open that door and they still, you know, I mean, you guys know it, they, they still come in. I don't know what the secret is. If there's any secret, it's, it's really about how, like our mindset, that's all it is. You know, I mean, there are so many days when it's so hard and I'm so exhausted, but in every single moment, I do my best to show up and I do my best to show up with a smile on my face and I do my best to breathe and try and be really, really calm. And I also do my best to remind myself that we have 18 summers with our children. Like it is so short, you know, it is so fleeting. Right. And so I just, I I use these little mantras, like, you know, you have 18 summers with your kids. So like make them count, make every day count, make every hour count. And I have these, this other mantra with my parenting. It's like, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Like in every single moment, I'm doing my best. You know, my kids are completely attached and they're safe and they're secure and they're so loved. Um, So I just, I just try and work on my mindset when it comes to, you know, the the big old juggle Um, and, and I do my best. I mean, I will say that I have worked out a bunch of techniques when it comes to time management. Like I don't come into my office and sit here and kind of, you know, write my <laughs> list and think I don't have time for that. Like I do the stuff that matters, right? And I do the stuff that's going to shift the needle. I do the stuff that's going to make money. Like I don't, I just, I don't have that time to, like I did when I was 20, 20 years old or 25 to sit down. And I have any of that time. If I'm in an office, like I'm not having chats with people because I, I don't have time for that. So I'm very, 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 um, focus when it comes to my work. I do the stuff that matters and I try and delegate everything else and, you know, let the other stuff go. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of entrepreneurs have to learn. They think they have to do everything and they, you know, they get to their office or they get to their living room table or wherever it is. And it's so stressful and overwhelming because they're trying to do every conceivable task, right? I mean, your job as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur is to reasonably, you know, make yourself not needed in your business as fast as possible, right? So I'm forever, every single day, I'm like, mm, I don't need to do that task. Someone else can do that for me. And I know for any newbies out there, you're going to be, be saying, I can't afford that. You cannot afford not to have that. And whether that means just having someone in your life a half a day a week or hiring a virtual assistant or just letting that task go, you know, you've got to do the stuff that is important that 
um, you know, helps you get closer to raising an invoice or making a sale. Like that is the stuff that's going to make a difference. And when you can have that really kind of absolute, you know, linear, um, you know, or tunneled vision or focus, that's when the business starts to grow because you're so focused on making money, you can then afford the help, you know? So it's sort of this vicious cycle that, you know, needs our attention and awareness. I love that you said that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's my, it goes back to everything in life. Your mindset is your biggest either nemesis or your biggest, you know, power, super human thing that can help you go forward. Because if your mind isn't right, you're going to limit yourself more than any outside person could. 100%. And I know it sounds a little bit sort of woo-woo, but like it's so true, right? And none of this stuff is new, right? It's like age-old fundamentals that you can wake up and you can choose your mood. And I know it's hard. Like, honestly, guys, like my five-month-old is not sleeping at the moment. I mean, he went through a little a little lovely spot of sleeping through the night. Now he's not. So he's up at three and four 30 and then I'm, you know, and so I'm tired, like I'm tied to the bones, but do you think I'm going to let you know that I'm never going to let any, like I'm, I get up this morning, I have my coffee, I put a smile and then like that mood dictates my energy for the rest of the day. And I give my all in every single moment, but I, I choose that. I don't sort of wake up and have this <laughs> amazing level of energy, right? I go, okay, cool. This is what I want to be. This is who I want to be. This is how I want to show up. And I choose that. Um, and I know for maybe some of your listeners are like, Nah, it's like it is a choice it's a choice you can choose to be in a great mood you can choose to be productive you can choose to be happy you can choose to be focused so I just say I love those choose. questions we need to write that down like who do you want to be how do you want to act today like that's who yeah. do you want to be today who do, where do you want to go today like yeah that's amazing that's a really good way to really think about it and if you don't sit back down <laughs> like, okay let's try again <laughs> I love that. So in the sense of cultivating relationships and like, this is so huge to us and our businesses. Cause I have a stationary company where my goal is like, I get people can buy paper goods from literally anywhere. Right. But when you purchase from me, like, I want you to feel like these good five feelings, like so freaking special when you get a kitty meow, which is my business package and you in your book winging it, you also make it a point, like a whole section on how to make people feel valued and special and loved. And if you could just break down some of your, like your favorite things and your, your do's or do nots with networking, just give us the the Emma gold nuggets here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is really, I mean, you asked about the secret sauce for parenting. I don't really know that bit. <laughs> I'm honestly winging it every single day. <laughs> and, you know, my kids are young enough now. They still love me and I hope they will forever. But um, I know this stuff, like I know cultivating relationships. And if I can tell you the one secret, you know, piece of, you know, secret sauce in my recipe of entrepreneurial success, it all comes back to relationships, right? It all comes back to how you treat people, whether they're people who work with you and your team, whether they're people that are supplying your business, whether they're your customers, it's how you treat people. And when it comes down to it, all any other human wants to feel is to be seen and to be loved, right? And it's our job as entrepreneurs to give that love. And when you give that love, people experience it with your brand and they want to buy more and they want to be around you, right? So you've got to be a magnet for people. So, I mean, when it comes to employees, um, one of the biggest things I do, and I talk about it in the book, is really setting the scene before anyone starts with you, right? So we um, really try as a company to um, hire slowly and to fire fast. <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way. Um, but I'm forever looking for good people to work in my business. You know, I, I see the people pipeline, like the sales pipeline, I'm constantly meeting people, you know, schmoozing them and keeping in touch with them and moving them along the pipeline. I know there's many, like there's probably four or five people that I know will work in my company, maybe not now, but maybe in two or three times, uh, years time, or maybe like 10 years, who knows? So um, I'm always looking for good people. I'm always trying to move them through the pipeline. But um, when we hire someone, we make sure we send around a note to the other team members and we say, hey, we, we've just hired Kat. She's going to start on X, Y, Z. Um, and the whole uh, the whole business send that person an email to say, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. You're joining the Business Chick family. This is amazing. I'm here for you. Any questions, whatever. So even before they've started, they feel totally welcome. On their first day, we make sure that they have everything set up because the biggest frustration for um, an employee is getting to... Like, 
Like they're so excited to have their first day, right? They turn up, they don't have their equipment, they don't have anything, not, no one talks to them, all that sort of stuff. So I make sure they have their laptop there, their business cards, anything that they need. Um, we always have a bunch of flowers on the desk for them. We have, um, you know, a, a bottle of champagne, some balloons, whatever it is. We really try and celebrate the moment of them joining the team. And that celebration carries through the day as well. So I always say you can never have your first day twice. So all that sort of stuff is really, really important. Um, and I'm really proud of the relationships we've had with our people. You know, my first ever employee in this company um, is still with me 15 years later. Um, my CEO of the business um, was with me in my first company, a staffing agency. She left to go somewhere else. Then when I bought business chicks, she came there and worked there for four or five years and she left to go somewhere else and she came back and she's been in the CEO role for five years. So she's on her third stint of working alongside me. And we've had a bunch of people who have done over 10 years in the company. So I'm really, really proud of this. And it's really as a leader, our job is to try and keep people stretched and keep people engaged and provide an amazing culture and an amazing experience at the place that we work. So that's a bit about the people thing. When it comes to external relationships, I really, really believe we should be always, 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 always networking. You know, a lot of people make the mistake that networking is just for when I need a new job or I need some more clients. And that is a huge mistake. We should be always, always thinking about how we can bring people closer to us, how we can bring people closer to our brands, closer to our stories, um, closer to a sale. So, you know, my way of doing that is there's 20 different ways and they're in the book and, um, Hopefully you guys can go out and grab a copy, but, you know, things like just keep sending an email saying, and the subject line is thinking of you. Hey, Kat, you just popped into my mind. I wanted to say hi, see how you're going. Is there anything I can help you with at the moment? Lots of love, Emma. Like just do those, do a couple of those a week, do 10 of those a week. You know, I'm also a mad stationary fan. So I'm always constantly, yeah, um, sending out handwritten notes to people. You know, at the end of the year, I'm the person who writes 600 holiday cards. And it's funny, a lot of people um, think that that's a really big mistake for a founder or a CEO to be doing, but I can tell you it makes a huge impact. It makes a huge difference because again, humans just want to be seen. They want to be they want to feel special. They want to feel as though you care about them. And that's just one little way to do that. Um, you know, I'm always following up. So if I go to a networking event, I make sure I put half an hour in my diary the next, in my calendar the next day um, to sit there and write notes to the people that I met and then follow up with them. You know, um, I think the detail is really important. So remembering kid, kiddos' names and remembering someone's dog's name. So if you're not good with, with remembering things, you know, put it in your database or whatever it is. Um, so... Yeah, I just think when it comes down to it, um, people want to be, they want to feel special, they want to be seen, and that takes effort. It takes effort from our part to really invest in our relationships. And, you know, I've seen that work time and time again, you know, with the different speakers we've been able to have on our, have on our, sta on our stage. Um, people like, you know, Seth Godin, I asked him to speak for us. It took me eight years to get Seth, you know, and that was because I didn't give up. Like I kept on sending him a holiday card and a birthday card. And if he asked, um, you know, if he was running a charity campaign, I would always donate, you know, like just how do you build that relationship over time that increases your credibility and increases that trust? And, and it does does take time but it also takes effort and it takes an investment in your relationships so there's some of the things there's some of the things <laughs> and it goes with customers too it's not just you know networking to get something it's giving the time for your customers and even though they're not customers yet they're just yeah. followers or they're just coming into your business something that I was taught and something that I really believe in is when somebody follows you or if somebody sends you a dm and they've never sent you you know how they go in the the secret box you know that you don't know them <laughs> that you have to approve them and I always send them a video or I send them a voice memo and I'm like hey thank you for being here like thank you for taking the time and always responding and it's just building that because they might just send you emoji today but then over a month they might be in an interested valuable asset to your community yeah that's a beautiful idea I think that's um that's next level that's amazing that you do that I like and video <laughs> <laughs> I mean, none of this stuff is really like, don't get me wrong. They are. No, but it's not groundbreaking. Yeah. yeah, it's not groundbreaking. It's just treating people how you want to be treated. And yeah. people often forget that, especially in a digital world and online, <laughs> everyone's so busy. Like you can never be too busy to build the relationships to care about people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we say it's not groundbreaking. It is not groundbreaking, but it is very, very difficult to consistently build your relationships and turn that into a habit, right? 
So we all sit here, we go, we know we've got to do these things. We know we've got to invest in our relations. We know we've got to reach out to people. We know we've got to ask for what we want, but you would be so surprised at the amount of people that don't do it. So it's one thing to kind of know it, another thing to actually live it. So I'd really encourage people like, you know, one of the things I do as a daily practice is I send a thank you email every single morning. The first thing I do when I open my laptop and start my day is I send a thank you email. And those thank you emails can be to um, an employee, a team member, it can be to a customer, it can be to someone who followed me on Instagram, it can be, I don't care, like get creative about it, it could be to you guys tomorrow, whatever it is. So, you know, to form that habit, I mean, a lot of the people think it takes 21 days, it actually takes about 66 days to form a habit, but to form that habit and to systemize that and to get that sort of into your bones to make that happen takes effort and it takes consistency. So we, we can know these things, but it's another thing to actually do them in real life. And how do you manage that being so busy or as, as you get bigger or as you get, like, you know, being a small business owner, you're wearing literally every single hat on top of you know, personal life and you're trying to do all of the things, how do you make that a priority or what is your tip for, you know, making sure, I mean, I guess it's that simple. It's a priority. I mean, well, for for me, I mean, again, the way I've grown my businesses is through relationships and I would be nothing without my relationships. So for me, investing in my relationships is going to make a difference to the growth of my business and the growth of my sales. Right. And, and for other companies out there, it may not be that. I mean, I, I, I'd pretty much hazard a guess that it'd be like a huge amount of people that, um, you know, fit into that same bucket of relationships matter, but you, you just do, you just do it until it becomes second nature to you. And then you start to see what comes back from that. And, you know, people are always saying to me, Oh, I remember when you did X, Y, Z for me, like 10 years ago. And I, I don't remember that I did that, but you know, to them, it has mattered. And to them, that's the way that my personal brand has been built in their eyes. And that's how they've been a member for 10 years and becoming to events for 10 years or conferences or, or, or whatever it is. So yeah, for me, I just um, prioritize it because I know it's the thing that matters in my business. Yeah, that's just so refreshing that you, I mean, you're now big business, you're not small business, that it's still important to you because I hear all the time from people in my own community or people that I coach, you know, handwrite, handwritten notes in individual orders is a big thing. Like we are not Amazon. So again, right. creating an experience. And they always say, well, what if I get too big to like write the handwritten notes? I'm like, first of all, girl, like check yourself, like wait till you actually have that problem before you've already like given up on the task. But yeah, those things, like no matter how big you are, like you can delegate it or you can find a way to make time for these things if they are important to you. They should be yeah. important to you. Yeah. And I can, I can give you a little bit of an example on that. Like we run these events, we get four or 5,000 women along to our events. Um, I'm not writing handwritten cards to four or 5,000 people, right? But the day before most of my events, I will sit down and look through the registration list and I'll pick 20 people to write a little note to, right? So it's not to say that you have to like do it on the scale that, um, of every single customer, but it's just a practice or a ritual or a habit that we need to keep doing and need to keep seeing people making them feel special. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And you are just so fantastic. Aww. Okay, so every episode, this is the Dreams to Plans podcast. And we tell everyone like, okay, you can have the most like amazing dream ever, but it is literally worthless if you do not have an action plan to yeah. follow through on. Even if it's not the perfect roadmap plan. It doesn't matter. You need to take some type of action. So we like to end each podcast with um, a little bit of homework. So just wing it, Emma, give everyone (laughs) like a quick, uh, some actionable steps to go home and do in regards to everything that we talked about with building relationships and not being a sucky mom. No, I'm joking. That's awesome. Um, that's great. That's great. And I um, completely agree with everything you said there. I mean, my book is called We Stop Thinking, Start Doing. And so I'm all about action, right? Like getting into action is the best way that you can cure any form of boredom or, um, you know, a broken relationship or um, broken finances. So yeah, getting into action is the key. I think start something, right? So start something, whether that's a conversation that you need to have with a loved one, like a relationship that needs to be healed, start that, you know, pick up the phone to someone, be a first responder in that relationship. Um, I think carrying on the theme of relationships, like actually get out one of Kat's beautiful pieces of stationery or get on your website and order it and send a note or send a card to someone, right? Um, I love your idea, Renee about um you know responding to your followers and sending them either a little video or a voice memo so let's let's do that as well 
Um, I want to encourage everyone who's listening to not stick their head in the sand when it comes to finances. So if you're someone in your business that thinks, oh, the money will sort itself out, it will not sort itself out. So really, I encourage you to check your cash position every single day, understand where your money is going, you know, and, and circling back to the start of this conversation about fear, what is the thing that is holding you back right now in your business? What are you scared of? You've got to attack that thing, right? Because it's always the pink elephant in the room, go and attack that thing. So there's four or five little pieces of um, homework for your listeners. But most importantly, we want you to go out and get Emma's book, Winging It. Yes, yes, you got to do that. Woohoo, I got to hit you. So I got the audio book because I'm a lazy reader and I just feel like, not to be creepy, but I know you because I've like (laughs) listened to you on all of these chapters. And again, I'm just like, I like to do things where Renee's like, no, I need to have the pages in front of me. (laughs) That's why you guys work together. You're different. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> so where can we find you? Um, don't give us your home address or anything. <laughs> My cell number is three one two. Um, so I'm at, at Emma Isaacs on Instagram and also at Business Chicks on my two social handles. I highly recommend getting this book. There's so many gems and it's literally my branding times a thousand. It's a pink book. I did it for you. (laughs) Every book, I'm like, every time there's a new chapter and there's a quote, it's a hot pink page. I'm like, (laughs) I love that. Yes, I love this book. It's very valuable. And that whole chapter, I think I read it like four times, like just went back because building relationships with people and taking the time for people is something that you're not taught. I don't think. And it's mostly everybody's kind of doing the opposite. So it was nice and refreshing to say, you know, hey, this is something that you should be doing and successful Mm -hmm. people do very well is Mm -hmm. they pay attention to people. So I love that chapter. Highly recommend this book. It's helped me in my business and my community. So Mm -hmm. I want to personally thank you so much for your time and just sharing that with everybody because it does make a difference. And small business owners, we can use every bit of knowledge we can to get upper hand. (laughs) 100%. Well, it's so great talking with you, bro. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for taking the time amidst your family of six children and husband. And I don't know if you have any animals, but thank you so (laughs) much. (laughs) All right, you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you.